So, what do you think is down there? Down where? Sometimes, Chet. I think you have less brain cells than fingers. Down there. Oh, down there. Yeah, well, heck if I know. I just knocked into it this morning. Yeah, I know, Chet. I was there. Oh, that's right. Well, if you're so curious, why don't you just go down there? Mmm, only if you come with me. Buddy system and, and all that. Time's a-wasting, Jethro. Well, would you look at that. What is it? Nothing. Well, except for these mushrooms. Don't eat that. Really? Why would I eat this? I just had my sandwich. Did you hear that? It sounds like something's down here. Well, let's get out. I don't want to come face to face with an angry bear. Well, it didn't sound like a... Uh... Oh, it's just a homeless guy. He doesn't look okay. Hey man, can we get you any help? Oh my... <laughs> First exposure, 1700 hours. Location, need to know. Time before SCP response, three days. MTF Bravo Romero was dispatched to contain a viral outbreak of SCP-008. By the time we arrived on scene, police had already blocked all roads in and out of town. A half measure at best. Estimated 60% of the town already infected. Nasty little thing. The zombie plague, they called it. SCP-008, 100% infectious, 100% lethal. Transmission occurs through exposed mucous membranes and all bodily fluids. Biting, they mean biting. After biting, you'll see flu-like symptoms with high fever, plus severe dementia in later stages. 20 hours later, and they're in a coma. For the sake of our sanity, this is when they are considered dead. The bodies start looking gangrenous, warped, grotesque. Then that's when they get back up. Surviving tissue assumes its original function and is highly resilient. Increased muscle endurance and strength. It can do basic things including standing up, balancing on two legs, walking, biting, grabbing, and crawling. Slow, but they've got a vice-like grip. Not something you want grabbing you. High blood viscosity results in negligible blood flow from gunshot, puncture, and slashing injuries. It's like their blood is turned to cement. The object will energetically move towards sights, sounds, and smells it associates with living humans. Subject will attempt to ingest living humans if physical contact is made. Neutralizing fully infected subjects requires significant cranial trauma. Well, if they're already displaying symptoms, enact quarantine protocols until we can dispose of them. You better be the MTF team I asked for six hours ago. Bravo Romeo, at your service. How bad is it? Like, that's a question you even need to ask. I trust you've been briefed? I've got the gist. Masks on once we enter the quarantine zone, aim for the head, no one escapes. The basics. That'll have to suffice. So how did it infect this whole town? We don't know. What we've been able to glean from the survivors is that it originated near the construction site on Route 7. I saw it when I was coming in. Looked like where they were dumping the bodies. That's what we've gathered. We'll be disinfecting this place for months. What's the game plan? We will be enacting containment protocol Kilo Psi. I'm not sure I'm acquainted with that. You said you were briefed. Classic Foundation oversight. Well, I guess I'll need to explain. The first thing your team will need to do is relieve the police. So far, we've been lucky that none of the creatures have come close to their checkpoints, so they're still in the dark. They think there's been a chemical spill, but given the population of the town, they're bound to collide. Bravo, Romeo. Let's get the local PD out of here. They've served their purpose. Sorry. Continue. As I was saying, your team will surround the town in a single file perimeter. Moving slowly and deliberately, they will close in around the town, eliminating all those creatures they come across. I think we can just call them zombies. 
That's a little too Hollywood for my taste. A second team will follow behind, considering those plague-infested corpses. Can't that spread the virus even further? That's very true. Fire won't necessarily eliminate every disease prion. That's why we'll be using modified flamethrowers that function more like a butane torch than a flamethrower. That's all well and good, Doc. But what happens when we come to a house? If burning's not an option, then what? You clear it. It's your job. You can't always avoid danger. We need an accurate count of the dead. Otherwise, we might end up down here again in a week. Position people at all exits and then send in two soldiers to clear the house, room by room. No stone gets left on turn. Roger that. Won't it break the perimeter, though? No. Everyone stops. If the perimeter is broken, the risk of a creature slipping through is too high. Might sound like a pain, but it's the safest way to do this. Now, after all the townspeople are accounted for, that's when we level this town. Every house, shack, road, gone. We can't leave any evidence of this place behind. Well, I guess my team has its work cut out for it. So why are you just standing there? Get going. Right, right. What came after was probably the bleakest time since I joined up. Now, I've been in worse situations, facing almost certain death, barely escaping with my life. But this was different. There was a lot of downtime to really think about the situation, about my life. It got depressing real quick. I took inventory of everything. What matters to me? Who matters to me? We finally finished things. The entire population accounted for. But there was one thing that was bugging me. How did this all start? I decided to investigate the construction site that seemed to be the start of it all. We got there and found that in digging the foundation for a new hotel, the construction crew had uncovered a cave. We went down. The cave smelled like your foot after a day of PT. That's where we found it. Patient zero of this particular outbreak. A shriveled up corpse, more rot than flesh. Someone must have put it out of its misery before we arrived. DNA and fingerprints didn't match anyone in town or on the missing persons registry. They say these things can live for almost 10 years without anything. What's it like being one of these things? Do they realize what they've become? Maybe that's a question we don't need an answer to. Oh, did I mention the best part of this up? After it's all over, after all the grimy, gory work is done, four months quarantine, no exceptions. It's like jail, but you didn't do anything wrong. It was gonna be a long time, but it wasn't all bad. Someone looks like they could use some cheering up. Well, if it isn't my favorite foundation doctor. <laughs> Stop, what about Dr. Buck? I've met some SCPs friendlier than her. <gasps> Stop, she's not as bad as you might think. What's in the box? I'll show you if you take back what you said about Buck. Fine. Dr. Buck is the friendliest, fuzziest, most sincere person I've ever met. That didn't sound sarcastic at all. Come on, show me what's in there. Okay. Are they... are they all for me? <laughs> of course. They might be a little dry. You know, I may have a PhD in experimental research of cryptids, but baking has never been my strongest talent. I'm sure they're wonderful. You can only have one a day, though. Don't want you getting all soft in there. <laughs> I'm gonna eat them all right now, and there's nothing you can do about it. Don't make me come in there. <laughs> it's missions like this that puts everything into perspective. What you couldn't care less about, and what you'd move mountains for.